Mac Voices is sponsored by Smile and Text Expander, the utility that turns your keystrokes into words, sentences, paragraphs, and more. Text Expander snippets can be synced and used in any application on both Mac, iOS, and now even Windows. Find out more, including how Text Expander can work for your team, at smilesoftware.com. Hi, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices at AltConf and WWDC in San Jose. Look, Jeff Gamet. Oh, hey, Jeff. Hey, <laughs> fancy meeting you here. Uh, it's it's always fancy getting to meet you, Chuck. Oh, yeah, thank you, thank you. Sometimes I get a lot of comments from folks, and they say, you know, oh, then you know, I'm sorry. No, no, not about you. Not oh, about you. Okay, okay. No, we come to conferences. They 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 know that. You and you and I hang out together. We hang out with other some of our other friends, mm-hmm. but I never interview you guys. And it's simple. We're all working, usually, and so I don't want to take your time away just to talk to me when you need to have other people to talk to. But we found some downtime. Mm-hmm. We also have something we definitely want to talk about. But before we do that, what's your impression of what's going on here in San Jose? It's really nice. It's what I'm really enjoying is that. We have all of these developers together from all around the world, and there's this wonderful diversity. It's it's not like the old days in in the coding world, where everyone was the same. Now it's it's all these different people from all these different walks of life, and I think that's awesome. I, I agree. Yesterday, when I got in line, um, we I, I was standing there with someone from Australia. You came over later. We sat at the key, at the alt cont version of the keynote mm-hmm. um, with someone from South Africa. It's right. it's just yeah, and everybody has that common interest and common common background. Yeah, it's it's really nice. It's very refreshing. Yes, but we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about. Max Talk, because this this is a road to Max Talk show, folks, being taped at AltConf. But still, it's the best way I could get a hold of Jeff and get him to talk about what he's gonna what he's gonna talk about at Max Talk. So, July, Woodstock, Illinois. Mm-hmm. You're gonna be there. I'm gonna be there. What are you gonna be talking about? I'm going to be talking some about uh, about smart home, home home automation, a little bit about HomeKit, and primarily I'll, I'll be coming in at this from the perspective of someone that's never gotten into setting up any any smart home devices before. So my plan is to to help people decide what's the right first device to get so they can experiment and decide if if they really want to go down this this wild and crazy path of, of smart home technology. And, uh, and if so, then how do they set up their, their game plan for moving forward with that? What are the pitfalls? What, what can they do to, to minimize headaches? And if they do have little headaches, how can they troubleshoot those too? Now, as we speak, all, uh, sorry, WWDC, I'm getting my conferences confused. So many conferences. Yeah. <laughs> uh, MaxDoc is, what, about six weeks, seven weeks away. So we'll probably both be talking about this between now and then. But... How, how do you feel about choosing devices based on security? We know HomeKit has, th- well, it's been represented to us that it has much better security than Amazon or Google. Do you agree with that, and is that important? Security is really important because you don't want someone hacking into your into your lights and turning them on at 2 in the morning or using them as part of a, a bot attack against some server somewhere else in the world. So, yeah, security is a big thing. HomeKit... Apple presents it as this very secure platform, and they're right, it is. The problem is, most devices that support HomeKit support other platforms as well, and because of the nature of the hardware supporting these other platforms, there are inherent security risks that are that are there and potentially vulnerable, even if you're using HomeKit. So you, you have to, to find out, when possible, what what uh, other platforms your devices support and then it gets kind of hard because now you're trying to keep on top of what potential security issues these other platforms might have because you could still be impacted by by whatever vulnerabilities are out there even though they're not getting in through HomeKit. Okay, that's something I've wondered about and now you've just informed me that, okay, if I've bought a HomeKit device that also is Amazon Echo compatible, mm-hmm. then I still have a potential security hole, even though I may not be using the Echo part of it. Sure, yeah, and 
what, what it comes down to is that the little chip that's managing whatever part of the communication it is for that specific device can have a vulnerability in it. Or maybe it's the camera sensor or the microphone sensor that's built into it has some vulnerability. And if the device can be accessed on a network and potentially outside of your local network, then there's that vulnerability there. So that makes, and that makes it a challenge on the other side because to say, okay, I'm producing this light bulb that is only HomeKit compatible, nothing else, that limits my market as a manufacturer. So I would probably want to go out and say, oh, I support these 10 or 12 different um, ecosystems, mm -hmm. but then I've introduced insecurities. Yeah, and it's not always the device maker that's introducing that vulnerability. It could be the company that made the chips going into the device. So, you know, I'm making this sound like it's this horrible thing, getting into smart home technology, because now you're just going to be hacked. The, the reality is you may or may not ever get hacked. And if you do, you probably won't even know because your devices, if they get hacked, will end up being used as some sort of uh, bot system for a distributed attack on, on something else. And there would just be small bits of data going out that, uh, that otherwise wouldn't be. And you, you just wouldn't know unless you actually know. So you get in, now you get in a very weird situation for yourself that I don't want to support that kind of attack on anybody else. Uh -huh. But the security risk to me is not maybe as grim as we thought we talked about, you know, a couple minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, the security risk to you isn't probably that bad. And there are companies that are making products now that will sit between your network and your router and watch for the the types of activity that would 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 be indicative of a device being used as part of an attack and then it will shut off the connection for that device hmm. okay gee um I've got a number of, of, of home automation devices, and now I've got to go back and do some homework on all of them. Thanks, Jeff. Oh, sure, <laughs> sure. But it's it's not as scary as we're making it sound right now. Yeah. I, I mean, I the, the mixture of smart home devices that I have in my place right now would probably scare you because of course I'm trying all these different things seeing what what's working figuring out how to take things that that shouldn't be able to talk together and mash them together so they can and it's it's really cool and I've been able to do some things that that uh, I wouldn't have been able to to make happen before you know like how do you take uh, an just a basic window air conditioner and make it smart well you know for under fifty dollars, I did it, and that's really cool. So now, now I have an intelligent air conditioning system in my place that's saving energy because it runs only when it needs to, and I, I just love that I've been able to figure out how to do things like this. And regardless of the potential risks, I'm not going to take any of this gear out. I'm, I'm loving what what I've been able to do so far. See that now? That's interesting to me. At the bottom line. A lot of us are going to take these risks because they're not that great a risk. We crossed the street a little while ago. Well, we took a risk. You know, so these risks are not that great, and the potential benefits are significant mm -hmm. as long as you understand both and decide what's for you. Yeah. And the, the bottom line is, you're. I keep coming up with all these bottom lines, so apparently there's a lot of bottom lines here. But... Where I'm going with this is that, yes, there, there can be frustration, yes, there can be headaches, because we're still in the very, very early stages of smart home technology, Internet of Things technology in our homes, and, uh, you know, so, yeah, there, there'll be headaches. But once you figure out how to, how to make the one thing happen that you really, really want to, to get together, and it just starts working, I mean, that's just so cool. Yeah, and it's addictive, too. You quickly become dependent on being able to say, and I'm not going to trigger anybody's systems, folks, but hey, whoever, turn on the lights, turn off the lights, yeah. make the lights 50%. 
it, it, it is addictive. And, and I, I admit, I thought, come on, I can go over and flip the light switch. But now that I've done some of this stuff, it's like, darn, this is convenient. And now I want to do it with more things. Sure, sure. And it's not just, well, I could get off the couch and walk over to the wall and flip a light switch. It's also... I'm gone for a week. I can have my lights coming on and turning off randomly so it looks like I'm around. I can have my lights turn on after dark when I get home so I don't come into a dark house. My porch light turns on automatically. So, I mean, there are personal safety and security things that, that are benefits from, from having smart home gear. Again, we don't want you to do the session here, but but one final question. Is there anything you have specifically stayed away from, any, any category of device, because of the security issues or because of any other, any other issues? And I'm thinking garage door openers, locks, um, anything like that, or have you just gone in whole hog? I'm still staying away from smart locks. And my, my big concern there is that the, the first wave that hit the market was put out quickly without really paying attention to serious security risks. And the notion that someone could use a smartphone and a Bluetooth connection to unlock your door was was a real possibility. So I, I wasn't comfortable getting into the smart lock market. Now, there have been new models that have been coming out from, from several different companies where security is something that they're taking very seriously. So maybe I'll start playing with smart locks now. We'll, we'll see. I, I have so many things that I'm experimenting with. I, I kind of don't have time to, to add locks into that. Yeah, I, I, I don't understand that at all. No, I, I, no, <laughs> no. So, Max, Max Stock, you were, you were an attendee last year. Yes. You're this year's speak, speaker. What made you so compelled to want to become a speaker at MaxDoc? I was, I was really impressed with what I saw last year. It, it, and it wasn't just the other presentations that I saw. It was the whole thing. It was the community. It was the, the smiles that I, that I was seeing everywhere I went. It was, it was like a reunion in a way where all of these people that that I know from the community were there but then all of these people that I'm interacting with on a daily basis through through podcasts were there too and they have a conversation with me every day and 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 I have a conversation with them but it's kind of a a, a one-way thing since we're not together and it, it, it was just so much fun when someone would walk up to me and and they'd say, oh, you're Jeff Gamut. I'm so glad to meet you. And I, and I tell them that I'm glad to meet them because I genuinely am. And then they'd say, okay, so, you know, the the whole thing with, with the, the hue lights that you were talking about the other day or the other month, or whatever, they jump into the middle of a conversation that they were having with me weeks or months ago. And it's, I mean, it's a conversation that's just been on hold for them. And now my wheels have to turn really fast and I have to, to set my way back machine in my head and, and figure out which show they were talking about and, uh, and then get back into their conversation. But, but it's great because this is a conversation that started maybe weeks ago and now it's happening, but it's happening in person. And just getting to be able to talk with people and share with people in, a, in an environment where everyone's welcome, everyone's happy, and there's all this great information being shared, it, it makes it a great event. So by the, by the time the event was over, I had already decided I would be speaking this year. And, and of course, I went and told the event organizers, I need to be speaking this year. And, and luckily, it all came together so, so that I can. So your threats worked. My threats are so nice. <laughs> They often include a please. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I can't help but draw comparisons between MacStock, AltConf, WWDC, even though neither one of us have a ticket specifically. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people in town here. There are probably a, a dozen good reasons that you people will use not to come to MacStock. And do it anyway, because it is so much fun. You, you learn so much. You get exposure to so many different interesting people. Some you know, some you mm -hmm. don't. Some that are podcasters and writers and authors and some that aren't. But it is just such a wonderful environment and we have a good time, just like here. I'm totally with you. 
the, the problem that I see is that there's a lot of people that have gone to other events in the past. And so they have this vision in their mind of what the events are and what they're like. And th that's perfectly fine. And, and of course, it's going to, to temper their perspective on what something newer, like, like Mac stock, is. But the thing is, these people may be creating an image of what the show is just based on an idea because of some experience they had in the past. And, and what I say is, go ahead and set the past experiences behind because this is a whole new thing. This, this isn't just come and listen to your favorite podcaster or listen to your favorite writer or whatever. This is come and be part of a community, come and meet the people that, that you wish you could hang out with anyhow. And, and I'm not talking about people like you, you and me, Chuck. I'm talking about the other people that, that are fans of the technology, just like you, and it's just, it's this great, it's like hanging out with family in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> or hanging out with friends in a good way. Yes, absolutely. Because if, if you don't go and, and these people aren't your friends yet, I promise you by the end of the weekend, they will be. That's just the way it works out. Oh, absolutely. Yep. All right. So again, July, um, Woodstock, Illinois, maxstock2017.com is where you want to go to get registered. You can see Jeff, you can see me, you can see a lot of our friends. Um, uh, Brian Chaffin speaking. I think, is Dave? No, Dave's not coming this year. Dave's not going to be able to make it this yeah, year. Conflict. Brian will be speaking. Brian? Yeah, um, so what many other good people. talking about this year? I've already told them this. Uh, not everyone has seen every show. I know okay. it's a surprise. Right. Chuck, what are you talking about this year? I would really like to know. Somehow the, the interview got turned. I'm going to be talking on trying to customize your Mac for maximum productivity principally using the tools that Apple gives you. I'm going to try to, I'm going to I'm going to try to stay away from third-party apps. There's some I just can't, sure. but it's primarily going to be the 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 customizations customizations, excuse me, that you can do to your system that make you more efficient. So, we'll see how it goes. I want to come listen to your session now. Okay, I maybe I can teach you some things. I, I hope so. I, I bet you can. I hope so. I hope so too. I hope so too. Jeff, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for uh, taking the time to talk to us. Oh sure. I, uh, thanks for for well pinning me against the wall so we could make this happen. Yeah. <laughs> and he is against the wall, folks. He couldn't get away. <laughs> folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. We hope to see you in Woodstock, Illinois, in July for Mac Stock. Once again, Mac Stock 2017. Go register right now. We'll see you there. Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes, links to subscribe, and to connect with Chuck on Twitter, Google+, Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, SoundCloud, the Mac Voices blog, the Mac Voices Dispatch, our weekly newsletter, and on Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard that helps you do more with your Apple tech. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com. In three, two, one. Yeah. <laughs>